Two days later, while working at the department store, she heard someone calling her name. She turned around and it was Gordon. Frida asked him, how did you find me in such a big store? Gordon explained that he had called the office to find out where she was. Frida immediately knew this was not just an unintentional meeting and was convinced that this was the beginning of their courtship. That evening, Gordon took Frida out to dinner and walked along the shores of the Columbia River. It was a beautiful first date, one that Frida had been waiting for for four years. A few days later, Gordon left to preach revivals in the South. Before he left, he asked Frida if he could write her. She enthusiastically said yes. This began a casual relationship. Frida's eyes were not the only ones that read these letters. I remember when she used to get letters and I would be so inquisitive to see what he said in those letters that I would steam them open once in a while and, and look in and read them. And so I pasted it all together and she didn't know that I'd been steaming them open and reading them. As characteristic of Frida, while they conducted this long distance courtship, she kept active in the work of the Lord. Ruth tells of how Frida led a couple to the Lord one wintry night. One night during a snowstorm, there weren't hardly any people to church, but this one couple came and Frida led them to the Lord and they eventually became missionaries that went to Columbia. After the service, Frida, her mother, sisters, and brother Dave barely made it back home through the blizzard, ending up getting the car stuck and having to walk five blocks in the blinding snow. As the snow began to clear, down the street trekking through the snow came Gordon. As Frida opened the door, there stood Gordon with a big smile on his face and a little box in his hands. As he opened the box, there was a diamond engagement ring, which he put on her finger. Later, he told her he had paid $75 for both rings. To Frida, they were the most beautiful diamond rings in the world. The wedding of Gordon and Frida Lindsay was one fit for the affluent of the day although they were of meager income and status. As the wedding approached, Frida trusted the Lord to work out every detail. Both Frida and Gordon were poor at the time, and any sizable wedding would have to be an absolute miracle of God's provision, and it was. Everyone pitched in to make the wedding a glorious occasion. Elma, Frida's sister, recalls her contribution. I, I know I was working at a bakery, and I was making $12 a week, but I bought Gordon and Frida's wedding cake and I cost cost me ten dollars for that great big huge wedding cake and uh, I worked almost a whole week to pay for that wedding cake. Because Gordon and Frida both grew up in Portland over 1600 people attended their wedding. The platform was overflowing with flowers donated by a friend. Many of the church said it was the most beautiful wedding scene in the history of the church. With wedding gifts packed to the ceiling of their second-hand car, Gordon and Frida drove to Salem, Oregon, about 50 miles, and stopped in an average-looking motel to spend their honeymoon night. As they entered the room, Gordon asked Frida if they could kneel together in prayer to commit their lives to the Lord as the first act of their married life. Gordon committed all that they had, present or future, to the Lord. As Frida has stated, this commitment to prayer took an otherwise average, ordinary man and propelled him into a great man of God. Immediately the next morning, they traveled to San Fernando, California, where Gordon had taken a fledgling church. As with most young congregations, everyone had to pitch in wherever needed. Frida was no exception. She found herself leading worship, singing solos, speaking, preaching, teaching the young people, counseling, directing the choir, and even cleaning the church. After a short time in the San Fernando church, Frida felt led by the Lord to finish her education at Life Bible College. She had one semester to finish the four-year course she had started in Portland. So Gordon decided to return to the evangelistic field, and Frida moved on campus and worked for a faculty member as a secretary paying for her tuition. Frida was one to finish what she had started, and one more semester at Life Bible College was easily obtainable. After graduation, Gordon and Frida pastored in Tacoma, Washington, and later planted a church in Billings, Montana. As was her nature, Frida helped out in whatever way Gordon needed her. Frida was the janitor, young people's leader, choir director, and worship leader. The conditions in the church were not the best. They were in this little church where there was sawdust and the wood stove in there, and it was cold, and 
Billings, Montana, it gets terrible cold in the winter, and it was damp, and so it just, it was, you know, not very good surroundings for her. It was because of these conditions that Frida contracted a cold that just wouldn't go away. Unable to shake the persistent cold and cough, a now 94-pound Frida returned home to Portland with Gordon to recuperate. Once Frida was safely in the care of her mother and sister, Gordon returned to Billings to continue the ministry of this new church. Boy, that was terrible when she came home and, and she was so sick and we only had one bedroom down and my mother was getting up in, more up in years and so we put in a, co uh, a cot for her in the living room and then uh, she just kept getting worse and worse and worse and finally um, my two sisters came over and they said, we're gonna take you to the doctor right now and they took her to the doctor and that's when they found out she had TB and they had wanted to put her in a sanitarium and, but they brought her back home. And I remember my father getting on the telephone and calling Gordon that he better get down there. His wife was very ill and had TB and he was, they were gonna send her to a sanitarium. So Gordon, he got, of course he got right in the car and drove and came home and they prayed day and night and the Lord completely healed her of that. And so she went back up to Billings with him. And my mother, oh, she just, she was, felt so bad she didn't want her to leave because she figured she'd never see her alive again. But the Lord did a wonderful healing on her. The fears of Frida's mother were not realized, and the couple returned to ministry in Billings, having triumphed over a fatal disease. This successful faith stance cemented Frida and Gordon's resolve to serve God together. For the next 35 years, their life in ministry, although not without hardship and trial, was a testimony of a couple sold out to God, following His call, no matter what the sacrifice. After returning to Billings, they both dove back into this fledgling work. The church grew, and again, God called Gordon into evangelistic work. They traveled the country and ministered with signs and wonders following. The work ethic ingrained in her as a child produced a person that was not averse to hard work, free to serve wherever needed. She painted crusade signs, canvassed the neighborhood, handing out pamphlets, advertising the meetings, and led the song service. In the midst of their evangelistic tours, their first child, Carol Ann, was born in 1940 and their second child, Gilbert, was born three years later. In July 1944, they received a call to pastor a church in Ashland, Oregon. When the Lindsays took the church, it was running about 40 congregants. Through neighborhood outreach and revival meetings, the church grew to over 300 in a town of 7,000. One night while in prayer, Frida told the Lord that she had everything she ever wanted, a spacious parsonage, a loving congregation, and for her children, the Southern Oregon State University was just down the street for them to attend when they were old enough. Frida thought that Ashland would be the place that the Lord would find her when the rapture occurred. Little did she know that a backward preacher from Kentucky would show up and turn her world upside down. Dad um, went up to Ashland, knocked on the door to uh, talk to the Lindsays and met Frida that night, they all went down to Sacramento to the meeting, to the Banner meeting. And what they saw and heard there um, turned the direction of their life around. Gordon felt right then that he should be part of that ministry. And of course, Frida was capable of pastoring the church. So Gordon took a year leave of absence from the church and traveled with William Branham. When my dad, knew through whatever evidence, through prayer, through prophetic word, through circumstantial evidence, through his Bible reading, he knew that the Lord was moving him in that direction. He would take a stand, well, not an ugly stand, not a dictatorial stand, but he would just gently kind of probe mom or, or to move her in that direction.